Hello, Rio Grande third graders. It's time to check our DMA. We are going to be working on week 22. And today's Monday, so we're going to be working on day one. So our first problem that we have is a fraction problem because it says write the given problem as a fraction. So one of seven daffodils. So this is like a set, right? A set of objects. All the objects are the, for example, flowers. I'm assuming they're flowers because it's saying one of seven daffodils. Or maybe they're different colors. We don't really know that much information, but we do know that one of the flowers, of the seven total flowers, is daffodil. So one of seven daffodils. So one of seven daffodils shown as a fraction would be one seventh. This is my denominator because I have seven total parts in my whole and one of those parts is being shown or counted as my numerator. So one part of the seven total parts. So one seventh. All right, now let's take a look at the second problem. It's a word problem. So it says in seven days, Dylan jumped a total of 35 times. So it says a total here. So if we know the total, this may give you a clue as to, well, if we know the total, it's either, it could be subtraction and we could take away parts or it might be division, right? Well, it says he jumped the same number of times each day. Well, if he jumped the same number of times each day, then this is probably going to tell us that we're using, right, division. So then it asks us, what are we trying to find? How many times did Dylan jump each day? So we know the total days. We know the groups, those are our days. We know the total jumps is 35. We don't know how many days, or excuse me, how many times he jumped each day. Well, if we're missing a factor, we also know that we can use division. And why is this division? Because we have our total, 35 times. We're going to take the 35 times and divide it equally between the seven days, which are our groups. So I'm just going to turn to the back here of my page. And I'm going to, and everybody else is also hopefully making sure that they're writing and showing their work and modeling this, right? So he's going to take these 35 jumps And he's going to break them up into seven groups. And the groups are the days. And he wants to know, or somebody wants to know, how many jumps each day. How many jumps each day did he perform? So, I know my groups. I have seven days. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. And let's do another one over here. Since we're running out of room, day seven. So there's my days. Those are my groups. And I'm going to take this 35 and partition it equally into those days. Now, could I start with 5? Well, what is 7 times 5? Oh my goodness, it's 35. So I could go ahead and use what I know about my multiplication and say, oh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Well, I've taken all the jumps got my S here, and I've broken them up equally into the seven days, and this tells me I have five jumps, and I'm putting a J here for jumps, a J for jumps there, 
five jumps per day, each day, five jumps each day. So that variable, that J, is really going to be five, five jumps each day. And so I've shown a model here. I've written a, an equation to show how I solved it. And it's division, and the reason it's division is because we're taking the total and breaking it up into groups and finding how many is in each group. That's what division is. You take the total and break it apart. Now, I can go back here, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, Dylan. I should remember that. That's my son's name. Dylan jumped five times each day because I took 35 jumps and broke it up, or broke them, I can say it, broke them up between seven days, right? Broke it up into seven days with five jumps each day. Now, this is something that we're going to continue to practice is learning how to make sure that we take what we know and write it in an equation. We know how to model it. And then we also know how to explain how we solved based on rewriting part of our question into our answer. So please make sure that you are writing this also. If you have to do this with me, that's perfectly fine. I want you to get practice so that way when you take the test, you are ready to be able to do these types of problems. Okay? All right. Now let's take a look at... We have a addition sentence here. We have two add-ins. We're taking the two groups, small groups, and we're putting them together as one total group. So this is a part, part, whole type of problem, right? So I'm taking 477 and adding on to that 298. And to put those together, I'm going to get my sum. Remember, that's called a sum. What's it called? Right, sum. So I'm going to show, let's start with an algorithm. Actually, let's start with, I know that 298 is really close to, yes, 300. It's two away from 300. So since I'm putting these together, I could just take two from here and add it on to 298. And notice how I'm putting my arrow from here to here to show that that's what I'm doing. I'm taking and adding two here. So this would be 475 now plus 300. Well, that makes this much easier for me to be able to add mentally because now I don't have to worry about my ones or my tens place, my tens or my ones place because 7 plus 0 tens is going to be 70, and 5 plus 0 is going to be 5. So this 75 is still going to be 75 because I don't have any ones, or excuse me, tens or ones to add to it. So I'm going to take that 400, add three more hundreds, and now I have 700, 75. Or I could take my 400 plus my 200, and that's going to give me 600. I can take my 70 and my 90. And remember, 90 is really close to 100. So if I take 10 from here, that leaves me with 60. This is going to make 100. So I have 160, 160. Here's my new 100 that I carried and regrouped. And now I have my 1s, 7 plus 8. Well, 7 plus 7, 
right? 7 plus 7 is 14, plus one more, 18, right? Because this is 7 and 1. Everybody should know their doubles, so this is 15. Now I have a new 10 here. Everybody see that 10? That <clears throat> gets carried over. So this would be 5, 60 and 10 makes 70, and 600 plus 100 makes 700. Still match, right? Shouldn't be different. Now I'm going to show one more way, and that's using our algorithm and lining it up. 7 plus 8, well, 7 plus 7 we said was 14, so 7 plus 8 will be 15. This 10 gets carried to the tens place. 90 and 10, which is what I did here, right? 90 and 10 makes 100 plus 7D, 7D, right? That 100 gets carried here, and that 70 stays in the tens place because it's tens. 70 is 7 tens. And then finally, I have my hundreds. I have my 400 and my 100 and my 200. So 400 and 200 is 600. Carry that 100 here from the tens. 10 tens makes 100. So I have, oops, sorry, 775. So 400 plus 200 is 600 plus the one I carried over, which is right here, is 100 more, which is 700. Our final problem is a fraction. And with this fraction, it says complete the fraction for the following shape. So the fraction for this shape is going to be, actually, oh, I almost forgot. This is going to be our problem for today. So round each one of these add ends to the nearest hundred. This is for your discussion today. Add each one of these add ends to the nearest hundred. And then you're going to round and then add them to find your sum. So the sum of the rounded number should be close to 775, okay? So make sure that you round each number first to the nearest 100, then add to find the sum of the rounded amounts, okay? All right, last problem, and it says complete the fraction for the following shape. Well, we're going to assume that they're talking about the shaded part. Notice they already put the denominator for us. Remember, the denominator tells us how many parts are in the whole. So remember, I want you to make sure and label all your unit parts. So this is one-sixth, 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 and this is one-sixth of my circle, of the whole circle. Oops, sorry, guys. Now, when I take the parts that are shaded, I have one, two, three, four. That's the numerator. It's how many parts we're counting or describing which parts we're counting. We're going to count the shaded parts. So this is going to be four, six. Now, if we were doing the unshaded parts or non-shaded parts, then it would be the numerator would be two, six. But we're going to assume that we're working with shaded pieces. Okay, so don't forget to go back and do that discussion question with this problem right here. And I will see you during small group today. Have a great Monday, guys, and see you soon.